All right, folks, so today we're back on the Xbox Series S, and this time we're going to be taking a look at setting up the Dock Station PlayStation 1 emulator core in RetroArch. Now, in order to do this, your Xbox will need to have developer mode installed, and if you've not already done that, you can check out this video here, which will walk you through the process of getting that all installed and set up. Along with developer mode, you'll also need to have RetroArch installed, and if you've not already done that, you can check out this video here that'll walk you through that process too. Once you've got all that set up, there's just a few things we need to do on the computer, so let's head over to the PC and get started. First, we're going to need to add some BIOS files to the RetroArch installation, and you'll see the three BIOS files you'll need, one for each region, NTSC-J, NTSC-U, and PAL, on the left-hand side of the desktop there. So in order to do that, we're going to open up the Xbox File Share, click on the Windows Apps folder, select the RetroArch installation, Click on the system folder and then just drag and drop the BIOS files in. Next we're going to add some games and in this case I'm going to add my PS1 games to the Xbox's internal SSD. So in order to do that, navigate back to the RetroArch folder by clicking the up button and select the games folder. I'm going to add a new folder just by clicking the new folder button and I'm going to name that PS1. Once you're done creating the folder, we're going to add the games just by double clicking to open the folder. And again, just dragging and dropping the game files into the games folder. So you'll see I have three games here in this folder that I'm just going to add to the games folder. If you're saving your games to a flash drive, you can create a folder on your flash drive in exactly the same way. Once those files are done copying over, either to your SSD or your flash drive, we're all done on the computer and we can head over to the Xbox. Alright, so here we are on the main developer dashboard screen, and we're going to start off by loading RetroArch by scrolling right, then down, and pressing A on RetroArch. So now we're on the main RetroArch menu. From here we're going to create a new playlist for the PlayStation 1 games we just added. So in order to do that, we're going to scroll right, then down, to import content, and press A. Next, within the Import Content menu, scroll right and down to Manual Scan and press A once again. And then within the Manual Scan menu, press A on Content Directory. If you save your games to a flash drive, you want to navigate to the E drive and press A. And right here is where you'll see the games you just added. If you saved your games to the internal SSD, you want to scroll down to the S drive and press A. Within the S drive, scroll down to Program Files and press A. Scroll down once again to Windows Apps and press A. Select your RetroArch installation and press A. Then scroll down to the Games folder and press A once again. Here you'll see the PS1 folder we just created. Scroll down to that and press A. And then scroll down to Scan Disk Directory and press A again. Next on the Manual Scan menu, scroll down to System Name and press A. And then scroll up to select Sony PlayStation and press A. Next, we're going to select the core that we're going to be using, so scroll down to select core and press A. There's a number of different cores available for the PlayStation, but today we're going to be taking a look at the Duck Station core. So scroll up until we see Sony, PlayStation, Duck Station and press A. Once you've selected the core, scroll down to the bottom of the menu and press A on Start Scan. Once the scan's complete, you'll see a notification at the bottom left hand corner and we can hit B to return to the main menu. Back on the main RetroArch menu, you'll see on the left sidebar menu, a new playlist has been created. So we're just going to scroll right over to that and press A. So now we've got the playlist created and you can see your games. We're just going to boot one real quick and take a look at a couple of the main settings that you'll probably want to tweak in the Duck Station core. Press A to select the game, A once again to run, and you'll see the PlayStation splash screen. As this is booting, we're going to open up the RetroArch Quick menu so we can modify some of the core options. Within the Core Options menu, scroll down to Options and press A. And then in the Options menu, scroll down to Console Settings and press A once again. The first option you'll see is Console Region. This can be left as Default Auto Detect, and it will select the correct region BIOS for whichever region of game you're playing. Next on the list is Fast Boot. If you want to skip the PlayStation splash screen at boot, turn this option on. CD region check and CD read thread can be left as is. Preload CD-ROM image to RAM will copy the game ISO to cache, which would improve performance on slower machines, but it really doesn't make a difference on the Xbox, so this can be left off. 
Moving on down the list, all other options can be left as their default, so press the B button to go back to the core options menu. Next, we're gonna scroll down to the enhancement settings and press A. In the enhancement settings menu, we're gonna scroll down to internal resolution scale and press A. The internal resolution settings are where you can modify your upscaling, and I'm gonna be using 1080p, which is fine for what I want. So I'm gonna scroll down to five times, but you can pick any resolution you want. Just select the level of upscaling you want to use and press A. Next, we're gonna scroll down the list to texture filtering. Now this one is a personal preference. I like nearest neighbor, but you can play with these settings to see which one you prefer. Once you've found the option you like, just press A to apply. The next option, widescreen hack, again, is personal preference, and I'm gonna leave this one off. And the final option, PGPX geometry correction, I'm also gonna leave as default on off. Next, we're gonna press B to go back to the core options menu and scroll down to port settings and press A. In the port settings menu, you can set up your memory cards and also tweak your controller settings. There are two memory card slots available in DuckStation and each can be set as shared, just like a standard PS1 memory card or individual, so you can save one game per memory card. This, again, is personal preference, but just press A to select the memory card and then choose the option you prefer. I'm gonna leave mine as a separate memory card per game in slot one, which is the default, and I'm also gonna leave slot two empty, again, which is the default. As I mentioned a second ago, there's also a couple of options for your controllers, and I'm gonna leave those as default settings too. Once you're done with your memory card and controller settings, press the B button to return to the core options menu once again. Next, scroll up to the top of the menu to manage core options and press A, then down to save content directory options. This will apply the changes you just made to any game that's in your PS1 games folder. Once you're done with that, we're gonna do a quick restart. So press the B button until you're back at the main RetroArch menu. Then scroll up to main menu, and left, then down to quit RetroArch. On the main developer mode menu, press the A button to restart RetroArch. And once you're back on the main RetroArch menu, you're ready to play your games. Navigate back to your playlist, scroll right, and select the game you want, in this case, Ridge Racer. Press the A button to select, and A once again to run. And there we go. So that's the quick setup guide for the Duck Station PlayStation 1 RetroArch Core on the Xbox Series S and X. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.